Hello, my name is Philip from Applied AI. Today I would like to give you a short introduction on AI strategy. That is how AI impacts companies and how companies have to react to AI. So starting with it, the question is, how is AI impacting the business? There are three main drivers. First, AI allows to digitize processes that used to be bound to humans. Think about traditional processes in a bank, like a credit decision, or things like writing for, for marketing. Those are things that were typically done by humans. Now, if you use AI, you can automate those processes, allowing to make those processes scalable. Second, AI is general purpose technology. That means you can use similar models, similar approaches to solve different tasks, also in different industries. Think of Google's DeepMind. They became famous to master the board game Go, but they also used similar approaches in different areas, like controlling the cooling system in a data center or also uh, predicting proteins. With this, the importance of domain knowledge decreases over time. And finally, AI, if you implement it in a process, leads to learning products and processes, enabling a kind of flywheel effect. What does this mean? Think of TikTok. If you use TikTok, you know um, you get recommendations, and those recommendations are getting better if you use more of, of TikTok. So over time, um, the AI-based models learn from your data, from your input, but they also get more valuable for you. So if you put more data into it, they get better, you want to use them more, and um, you have a better user experience. Taking those three points together, AI will have an impact on basically all businesses. The basic question is not kind of if it will have an impact, it's only when and to, to what extent. Second, um, AI changes the mode of competition and it uh, leads to so-called kind of winner-takes-it-all competition. That means if you take those drivers together, they foster rather larger companies driving the, the application. So AI will create new opportunities for companies to make things well, more efficient, better, more scalable, but obviously it's also a threat for companies. And we're not talking about the future. I mean, AI is already here and actually creates million of, of, or billions of, of, uh, of revenue for companies. If you think about the large tech companies, by now their business model really relies on using machine learning, using AI. Think about Uber. If you order an Uber, the price is determined by a machine learning model. The drivers are allocated um, based on predicted demand. If you think about TikTok, um, the predictions of what you should watch, making sure that you spend most of the time on the platform is done by machine learning. Or think about autonomous driving. Um, there are machine learning models replacing the, the driver. So already today, AI is at the core of the business models for many tech companies. But if you look at the broader economy, in particular, the more, let's say, traditional companies, AI is increasingly adopted, but companies still face challenges. So a recent survey of global companies showed that almost 50% of companies use AI in at least one of their business units. But if you look closer, it's only a small share, like 8% of those companies that use AI, that really create a massive bottom line impact. Now, what's the reason for this divide? Why are some companies, the tech companies, really kind of running ahead while the others struggle? To understand this, it's important to understand that AI only creates value at a certain level of maturity. That means you need to get us to a certain level to capture the full value potential of AI. Here, this is our maturity model, consisting of four levels. First, of course, I mean, you need to get started, need to understand that AI is important for your business. But when you start, kind of starting with AI is rather easy. Kind of creating your first model is typically only takes a few lines of code. It's not, it's not a lot of development needed. I mean, you need the right data, but you can also use some existing cloud-based services. So getting started with AI is not hard. But the, the challenge starts if you want to move away from your first proof of concept project to really using AI in production. Then a whole range of new challenges emerge. You need to make sure that your data is consistent. You need to make sure that you understand if your model behaves in, in a consistent way and so on. So you need to reach a certain level of maturity to kind of capture the first value. This is what we call the practitioner level. 
But even there, if you're at this level, you typically need to spend a lot of resources to, to, to have your models running. So only if, you, if you're able as a company to bring AI across the company, as what we call the professional level, you're able to, to capture um, sustainable value from AI. And then only, um, and that's what we call the shaper level, only if you're at a, at a stage where really AI is at the core of the business, you're able to capture the full value potential. Now the question is, what does it take to get into those different maturity levels? And the answer is, it takes quite some dimensions you need to address. This is what we take together in our AI strategy house here. So to mature in, in, in AI, um, it all starts with setting the ambition. The ambition is really the question for you as a company to say, hey, what is the value that AI can bring to my business? But also what is the things I need to change in my business with AI? That's what we call the future competitive advantage. You should really start with looking at your core business and ask the question, how will AI have an impact to it? And how can I use AI to make my business better and, and, and make it future-proof? But that's obviously only um, well a part of it. The other question is, is also, what can you do? I mean, if you're competing with large tech companies, it's certainly clear that you might not be able to kind of change everything. You have limited resources. So you really have to be careful about um, the question, what can you do um, as a company? So based on this, you need to define your field of action. Think about the strategic fields where you need to invest into AI. So first level is your ambition. That's kind of your North Star, where you want to go with AI. Then second, it's about the use cases. It's about finding the right use cases. It's about deciding on which one do you want to build internally, or rather which one you also shouldn't build internally because there are already state-of-the-art solutions out there, there are good solutions out there, and you don't gain a competitive advantage by building them internally. And finally, with the use cases, about thinking about them from a portfolio perspective. Not about individual use cases, but think about them, um, how they connect and how they build um, upon each other to, to fuel your AI ambition. And then the third dimension is the enabling factors. You need to have some factors in place in order to execute your AI ambition. This typically starts with the question of having the right people to, to do AI, basically, kind of either implement models or also adopting a model from the outside world. But then you also have to think about how to organize your, how to organize your people. Is it something you want to do more centrally, more decentrally? Um, how to set up those, those teams? Then there are a lot of other questions. Obviously, data is a key point, key, in, key input for all AI ambitions. So you really have to make sure to ask the question, where do you get the data from and how to, how to structure your internal data? You also have to think about your technology. Do you want to run your AI applications cloud-based? Do you want to build something internally? How do you do what's now called MLOps? Um, like how do you build your infrastructure to run your um, AI models? And it continues with a bit kind of softer uh, points, things like culture. How do you make sure that your company understands the value of AI, but also understands the challenges that come, that come with AI, including some ethical questions you need to address. And finally, it's about understanding your ecosystem. It's clear that as a company, you won't be able to do AI alone. So you need to think about what are the right partners you need to work with um, and what are the partners you want to have to drive your AI adoption. And then finally, the fourth layer is about execution. So you would have to think about the processes, how to implement AI. And here you have to make sure that you understand when you want to rather kind of try out things. This is about exploration. So starting with AI, you need to try out things because you typically only when you apply AI models, you can find out how good they are, how good they work. But at some point you need to move beyond this exploration phase and really develop AI solutions in a way that they can run at scale. Taking those aspects together, this is strategy house, and these are all the dimensions you need to address. Now, this might sound quite complex, but it isn't. It just means you need to think about those points. Now, the important point is that you address those dimensions consistently across all dimensions. So typically, organizations tend to focus on some points and just invest some money in some points. 
different things that you can rather kind of touch. So things like infrastructure, uh, investing into setting up um, high performance compute. That can be helpful, but obviously if you don't have the right use cases and you lack the understanding of your ambition where you want to go to, that doesn't help. So you need to make sure that you start with those things constantly, but also be aware that things are changing over time. Think about your AI organization. When you want to start with AI, typically you want to rather centralize activities because you want to make sure that you bundle expertise. But then at some point, typically when you want to become professional, you can't drive this by a central team. So you really have to think about how to drive AI across the company. Taking things together to successfully master AI transformation and make sure that you capture the value from AI, you need to think about the dimensions of the AI strategy house, but be also be clear on how to address them over time. Many thanks for listening to this short introduction to AI strategy. If you're interested in more aspects around how to drive AI adoption into a company, you can check out our website, applyedai.de, where you find material on all of those aspects.